Hello Woodstock, I'm Jeff Moon, City Manager, and this is the next in our series of videos talking about how the City of Woodstock is uh, dealing with uh, the COVID-19 virus and how the pandemic is affecting city operations. So joining me today is our CFO, Ron Shelby. Ron, glad to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Ron, uh, unfortunately, uh, his start date with the city was right about the time COVID-19 was breaking, so he's had an a interesting introduction to life in Woodstock. But Ron, if you would, since you're new and most a lot of people may not have met you yet, just tell us briefly about uh, where, where you were before you came to Woodstock, and then we'll go from there. Okay, uh, I'm Ron Shelby, and yeah, I came from the Center for State and Local Finance at Georgia State University, uh, where I ran an exec ed program. Uh, that trained uh, uh, local government uh, CFOs. Um, so that's where I came from. And previous to that, I was a CFO for uh, uh, Galveston County, Texas. And that's where you and I have something in common a lot, both working in coastal areas and getting to deal with disasters and FEMA and everything that comes along with that. So I guess exactly. that experience is coming in handy now. Um, well, if you would, uh, tell us current, how the current COVID-19 crisis is affecting the operations of the finance department in the city. Well, uh, it's having a minimal impact on the finance department itself. Uh, like most employers, we do have employees who have children uh, who are in school and uh, are now at home as a result and also do not have child daycare. So they are working from home. Uh, but overall, the transition has been fairly seamless and things have gone smoothly from that standpoint. Okay, very good. So uh, another question that someone may be wondering, if I'm a vendor of the cities and I submit an invoice, will the current uh, changes in, in the work dynamics with a lot of people working from home and the office being closed to the public. Is that going to impact me in any way as a vendor to the city with invoices I may send in? No, you should see no difference in the timeliness of your payments or any of the processing. Um, there are no current issues with the U.S. Postal Service. So as long as those invoices are, continue to come to us here at Highway 92, we can go ahead and take care of those. Uh, if a vendor is concerned about a payment, uh, they should contact me or my staff by email. Uh, you can get the addresses off of the city's website uh, at www.woodstockga.gov. Um, and we'll immediately work on resolving whatever issue it is. Okay, very good. Uh, and I mentioned in the previous question, the annex is currently closed to the public. So if I need to make a payment for a water bill or a, even a traffic citation or, or anything along those lines, you know, how can I do that now? Okay, so we've got a bunch of different ways you can make payments. Uh, you can make payments online. If uh, the portal links, there are portal links available at the city's website. And again, that's www.woodstockga.gov. And you can scroll down to the quick links that are down below and find the one that says pay online. Uh, or you can also just type pay online into the search function up at the top right hand. Uh, on the city's website. And so that will take you to the pay online uh, uh, site and you can go and do your payments there. Uh, you can also call in and we can take payments by phone depending upon the department that it is. So we can do that as well. And you can mail in your payments. Uh, we'd only suggest that when you uh, mail in that payment, mail in the remittance that came with your bill uh, so that we can credit it properly to you. And then finally, uh, utility billing is still taking drive-through payments at the drive-through. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that as well. And that's always a good option for those who may not be comfortable making an online payment. Exactly. All right, well, that's good. Um, I know uh, in local government uh, with the July 1 fiscal year, this is budget season. It's always one of my favorite times of the year right up there with the, ho uh, the holy holidays. Uh, so what impact do you see uh, on the current year budget for the city and for planning for next year's budget, which begins July 21st or July 1st? So uh, at this point, the full costs of COVID-19 are not known. So we're not there yet. Uh, the public's health and safety is always one of Woodstock's primary concerns, and that's our mission. So most of the uh, COVID-19 response we're doing right now, we're already within services that we already provide. So there's not a lot of additional costs we're getting hit with yet in terms of that. Um, for all new costs that we do end up incurring, uh, FEMA's already indicated that, that they'll cover 75% of COVID-19 related costs. So uh, that'll relieve some of the burden on us as well, but we still expect there'll be some impact. Uh, the area of greatest concern for us in the, is the long-term impact that COVID-19 uh, will have 
on the community as well as the volta volatile stock market uh, on our economy. Uh, that'll be dependent upon how long it takes to get through the, the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, as many of our citizens are out of work and then there's a significant number of businesses that are currently shut down. So that's all important for us to watch. Uh, COVID-19 in the market will directly impact sales taxes uh, for us, and that comprises 8% of our city revenues uh, for the general fund. Uh, it's further potential of indirectly impacting home sales, local property values, uh, with taxes making up another 55% of our budget. Uh, so there is a chance for some significant impact at, in the future. Now, the wild cards, they forced us, us to be conservative with our current budget and with next year's budget. So the city has currently frozen any open positions. Uh, it's frozen any non-necessary curtain year capital expenditures. And then at the same time, it, it's also frozen any general operating fund projects until we can assess uh, any further impact of this event. So the city's fiscal year, as you said, runs from July 1 to June 30. We ad adopt our budget in May. Uh, so we've already been collecting departmental budget requests. At this point, we've had to put any requests on the back burner. Uh, tentatively, it looks like we'll be adopting a budget that just holds services flat into the next fiscal year. And if some of the potential revenue issues related to COVID-19 are resolved, then the council can return to consider uh, those requests that were previously suspended for the next fiscal year. Okay, very good. Um, looking into the um, the future, do you have any idea yet what the uh, suspension of public meetings is going to do, or is that something where you're still trying to work through on how you're going to advertise public hearings for the budget and all of those things? Uh, I have not actually looked deep into that yet, so I can't really answer that. Yeah, I think a lot of local governments are struggling right now with that on how to how to, to meet the obligations to advertise for budget hearings, but also for all public hearings for zonings and and uh, everything that goes along with what we do and the council does on a daily basis. I think we're all struggling through that right now as well. Uh, so uh, Jeff, so what's the city doing uh, to help restaurants and other businesses get through this in the short term? Sure, well, we've done, uh, for the short term, we've done a, a, a number of things. Um, we suspended enforcement activities on delinquent business license accounts. Uh, we're not applying penalties uh, and interest on delinquent business license accounts that would normally be applied on April 1st. Uh, for the restaurants who have an on-premise uh, consumption license, meaning they sell beer, beer wine, liquor, uh, by the drink in the restaurant, they uh, each month pay a 3% uh, excise tax on that. Uh, we've suspended, um, they have to file the report, but they don't have to make payments. We've given them 30 days. Uh, we'll look at that month to month. We did it in March. We're doing it in April. Uh, so they can, uh, they can take 30 days to pay those without penalties and interest. Uh, we're also the same thing for the uh, brewery in town. They, they have the same tax. They're able to suspend it for 30 days uh, and then make the payments. And we're also for our hotel motels um, that are, are not uh, extended stays, uh, we're allowing them to also uh, take 30 days to make the payments on the hotel motel tax. And what are you guys doing to help the rep, uh, the residents with their delinquent property taxes and their water bills? So there are there are some obviously, and uh, what, what what I proposed to council and what council agreed to. Uh, so for water bills for the month of March, we're not applying uh, penalties and interest and late fees on water bills. Uh, we also not, did not do cutoffs on delinquent counts in March, and we're not going to do that on April uh, either. Uh, for um, the uh, five phase, which are filings that are made, which imposes the penalty interest on late property tax payments, we deferred those. Uh, we'll have a conversation about those again at the end of April. Um, and so what we're, we're really trying to look at those things that uh, we know for both businesses and residences, the fees they pay on a monthly basis to try and work with them to help them on those. Great. So what's uh, the city looking at uh, to help the local business community in the longer term to help recover through this? So I know our economic development department in conjunction with the downtown development authority has a, a website that they've set up for uh, food to go. 
uh, where they're at helping restaurants publicize that. They also have a resource page that they've sent out to the restaurants that has all the information we're getting from SBA and federal governments on options and uh, programs that are available to help existing businesses. Uh, one of the things the councils task us to look at with is for uh, business license or business occupation tax renewals that are due in October of this year. Uh, we're going to look at adjusting those, especially for impacts on small businesses. Uh, and expect that a good number of them will have that fee waived uh, for uh, 2021. So that's one of the things councils ask us to look at and uh, we're looking at now and I'll uh, be making some announcements on that in the very near future, uh, once we can get back to having city council meetings. Great, great. Well, Ron, I really appreciate you taking time. Um, glad you're here. Uh, I served as interim CFO, uh, in addition to the city manager's job before you, before you came aboard. So I'm definitely glad you're here. We appreciate your time. Just one comment about this video series. Um, this was the idea of Stacy Brown, our communications manager. Uh, and she has really put all this together. So uh, we're trying to put the council members and the department directors, uh, get them involved and put them before the public, at answering questions that people may be wondering about that the news media is not gonna cover that are really hyper local. So we really appreciate taking the time to watch this and hopefully you've learned something from it. Have a good day and stay well.